the video you're about to see, I'm going to go through my closures of what a fact is and what it isn't. I'm going to go through the etymology of it. I'm going to go through several fiction sources to show what the fiction says a fact is, as opposed to what an opinion is, so on and so forth. And then I'm going to go through my finite mean written in correct sentence structure of what a fact is and explain each component of that. It's going to be an involved process because having closure on what a fact is, is a core element of being able to position your claims as facts and gain closure and clarity on what correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar actually is. So what we're looking at here is what Google gives me when I look up fact as I scroll down here. A thing that is known or proved to be true. What makes something a fact? In science, a fact is a repeatable, careful observation, measurement, also called empirical evidence, Scientific fact is an objective and verifiable observation in contrast with a hypothesis or theory. In other words, a fact's a fact. It doesn't matter if it's a scientific fact or, as the kids say these days, a true fact. A fact is a fact. What is a fact legal definition? An event, occurrence, or state of affairs known to have happened to be distinguished from opinion or law. To be distinguished from opinion or law. Keep that in mind. Facts can, however, be found proven in legal proceedings where there may or may not have actually happened. Facts can, however, be found proven in legal proceedings where there may or may not, where they may or may not have actually happened. Well, what are they saying in that sentence? Facts can be proven when they have not actually happened? Well, what does that make it? I guess it makes it... an opinion. What is opinion from Black's Law Dictionary? In the law of evidence, opinion is an inference or conclusion drawn by a witness from facts, some of which are known to him and others assumed. Okay, so Google says an opinion is a view or judgment formed about something not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. All right, so then what's a judicial opinion? Judges written case judgment explanation. So every judgment from a judge is an opinion. An opinion is not a fact, and it's not based on fact or knowledge. What is a fact? An action, anything done. From the Proto-Indo-European root, D-H-E, to set, put. Interesting side note, they throw this in here. Especially evil deed. Now, I don't know why that's in there. I don't see it anywhere else. I don't see it connected to the Latin root of the word. I don't know why they would put that in there. It's kind of funny, though. So you think of the word fact, and then think of the word act. You have things that are factual and things that are actual. Actual is pertaining to acts or an action. Facts, I guess, would pertain to facts or a faction. You have actors and you have factors. <laughs> so that's my little etymology of fact. And now we will move on to the correct sentence structure portion of this video where I give closure to my finite mean
of fact. You may notice in this video that I use colons a lot. And the reason I'm using those is because it cuts down a lot on the writing that I'm going to be doing. And so I'm going to briefly explain the function of the colon and what I'm about to present to you. These colons represent position loadial phrases. Now this requires that you have a basic knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I've also done a video giving closure on my use or oiti of the colon with the correct sentence structure technology, which is a very specific uh, method that only works if you follow very strictly the base guidelines of the sequencing of the positionals. So for the claim of the colon function is with the symbol of the position loadial phrase with the use with the oiti by the author claimant for the author and claimant of the oiti is with the position loadial phrase of the symbol with colon function by the claim. So I'm telling you and giving you closure on why I'm using the colon. And you can watch that colon video, the uh, closure on the full colon to uh, perhaps bring this into a cognizable form if it isn't already. I invite you to look at the bottom of your screen where you will see my quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, finite meaning of the word fact. And I invite you to read it with me. For the fact, of this finite mean is with this claim of this contract, with the cognition of this whole, with the value of this matter, with the certification by the contract parties, period. And backwards, for the contract parties of the certification are with this matter of the value, with this whole of the cognition with this contract of this claim, with this finite mean by the fact. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take each fact and I'm going to share with you my quantum grammar finite mean for each word to go through and share closure of what a fact is in my construct. And hopefully help you to bank your own value in the term fact. So the very first, well, the second fact in that finite mean, the first being fact itself, fact would be the cause of the finite mean. And what is the finite mean? What is the fact concerned with? It's concerned with the finite mean. What is a finite mean? As I've given closure in other videos, if a finite mean is a finite meaning of something, as opposed to the fiction definition, this book has definitions in it. DE means no, finite contract. No finite contract definition. A finite mean gives finite quantum closure to each term. So this, for the finite mean of the known, is with the claim of the closure, fact, and knowledge, with the content of the communication particle, with the cognizable form or performance contract of the symbol command with the certification and limit by the author. What this is saying is the finite mean of the known. These are knowns. The facts are knowns. With the claim of the closure, fact, and knowledge. So the finite mean contains closure, fact, and knowledge. Closure, fact, and knowledge are possessive of the claim of the finite mean. With the content 
of the communication particle. Communication particle being these words we have on this board. Cognizable form means it's a form, it's a form of something that you understand. Or performance contract meaning a contract, whether it's on a piece of paper, whether it's verbal, whether it's in an email. Every, as Colin David Eckerman, Colin Miller has said multiple times, everything is contract. Everything is a contracting venue if the contracting parties consent. With the symbol command, symbol command, these are symbols and they're commands because it's my construct. I'm the commander of my construct vessel. With the certification and limit by the author, meaning I'm certifying this right now and I put a limit on it. I put a quantum on it, i.e. quantum grammar, grammar of closure, finite meaning, a limited meaning. It doesn't go on and on like Webster's Dictionary. There aren't more than one, it's one word, one meaning. And that's my closure on finite meaning. The next word in the finite meaning of fact is claim. For the claim of the finite mean is with the conveyance of the stewardship, with the duty of the location, with the certification, by the fact. A claim, you're conveying something with the claim. The claim conveyance is possessing the finite mean of the claim. What's it concerned with? It's concerned with the stewardship or possession. Possessive of what? The duty. Concerned with the location, right here, this claim. Possessive of what? The certification is possessing the location, the duty, and the authority is the fact, which we are giving a finite mean to right now in this now space continuum. For the fact that the certification is with the location of the duty, with the stewardship of the conveyance, with the finite mean by the claim. The next fact in our finite mean of fact is contract. And as you can see here, I'm hyphenating contract. I've done a video on that, on how contra is a particle of negation. So I performed a salvage on the word contract and hyphenated it to make sure the con is separate from the tract. So a contract of the finite mean is with the claim of the corporation with the two vessels or auxiliary vessels which means two or more vessels of the joinder with the treaty of the joint tenants with the states by the mind vessels consensus and what you're seeing here is it's a claim of corporation two or more vessels coming together to make an agreement, a joinder with, along the same path, the same tract. It's a treaty, joint tenants together with the states of the consensus because all contract is consent, honorable and graceful contract, consent with the mind vessels consensus, meaning the thinking is together along the same track. Now we move on to cognition. For the cognition of this finite mean is with the claim of the contract, with the maintenance 
of the value, knowledge, and contract terms with the function of the trade medium with the certification by the contract parties. So we have the claim, which is possessive of this finite mean of cognition, which I'm explaining to you, concerned with the contract. With the maintenance, maintenance is possessive of the contract. We're maintaining a contract. Concerned with what? Concerned with value, knowledge, and the contract terms. With the function, the purpose, possessing the contract terms, what are the contract terms? Concerned with the trade media, meaning we're trading information, we're trading facts, we're trading data in a medium, a neutral zone, a medium zone in between the two of us is coming together inside with the understanding, with the certification by the contract parties. Meaning you have to have one, more than one person to have a party. You have a contract. It's all by consent. The parties are cognizant of the contract terms. And we maintain those. We value those and we have knowledge of those. Understanding of the contract terms by the contract parties. The next fact is whole. For the whole of the finite mean is with the claim of the oneness, with the quality by the parts. So what we're saying here is that the oneness is concerned with this claim of the finite mean, the closure of the whole, with the quality. The quality is possessing the oneness with the authority by the parts. And then if you go backwards on that, for the parts of the quality are with the oneness of the claim with the finite mean by the whole. So the whole is the oneness with the quality of the parts that we're talking about. So all of these finite means, which make up the facts of the finite mean of the word fact, they're parts of the whole of the finite mean of the fact. The next term will be value. For the value of this finite mean is with the claim of the cognition, with the satisfaction of the vessel state's mission, with the matter and cognizable form of the function, oity, or service, with the certification by the authority and claim. And what's that, what that's saying is, the claim is concerned with the cognition, the understanding. We've given closure to that already. With the satisfaction of the vessel state's mission. So the vessel state has a mission, and that mission has been satisfied. With the matter or cognizable form, a form that we understand, a matter, a thing, what are we talking about? With the function, oity, or service, with the certification by an authority claimant. So backwards, the authority claimant is concerned with the certification. With the oity, service, or function of the matter cognizable form. What is the matter cognizable form? What is its function? What is its use? What is its service? With regards to the vessel state's mission, if I'm making this, putting a value into something, what is my mission in putting the value in and what is it satisfying with my understanding of the claim with the finite mean by the value? Value is banking. Your banking function, use, or service 
of a matter, a thing, a cognizable form. For example, right now, as we speak in this now space, as I speak in this now space, I am banking a value into a cognizable form, i.e., I'm sharing with you my finite mean and closure on the finite mean of fact, which is a matter, a cognizable form. And by in doing so, I'm showing you the function, utility, or service of that finite mean by sharing the closure with you. Now we move on to matter. What is a matter? For the matter of this finite mean is with the claim of the cognizable forms of the source mind and author and claimant by this claim. The claim is of this finite mean of matter is concerned with the cognizable forms. Forms we can understand. We can understand this paper. We can understand this board. The words I'm speaking, possessive of what? What are these cognizable forms coming from, this matter? From the source mind and author and claimant by the claim. So backwards, for the claim of the source mind, author, claimant, in my case, my source mind, is with the understandable forms of the claim with the finite mean by the matter. So a matter is just a form of something that the author, claimant, and source mind can understand. The next term is certification. For the certification of this finite mean is with the claim of the contract with the creation of the certifiable judgment with the fact by the contract parties. So the finite mean and the claim are concerned with a contract of the creation with the creation of the certifiable judgment. So we have claim, which is possessive of the finite mean and certification, concerned with the contract. The creation is possessive of the contract and concerned with the certifiable judgment. What is a certifiable judgment? It's something that the contract parties can come together and join her with in a cognizable form and recognize it as a fact. Certification. Two is certification. Two people can come together and certify a fact. That's a contract. Now, two or more people, of course, can come together and certify what a fact is. But that is my finite mean of certification and how it applies to all of my contracts and my finite mean of fact. Last but not least, contract party. For the contract party of this finite mean is with the claim of the fact with the participant of the contract with the certification by the contract. So the contract is the authority of the contract party. So when you get together and you have a party, the contract is the authority of that contract party if it's a contracting party. Backwards for the contract of the certification is with the contract of the participant with the fact of the claim with the finite mean by the contract party. So the claim is concerned with a fact. Possessing, the participant is the possessive, possessing the fact. Meaning if you are a participant in this party, you're possessive of this fact. You're, you're in stewardship of this fact. Concerned with the contract, now we have this possessive certification, which is 
possessive of the contract and the authority is the contract of the certification. So as you see, the contract is the key element in what a contract party is. If you get a group of people together that are creating contract, that's a contract party. And if you're a member of that, a participant of that, you are a contract party. And that's what that means, contract parties.